Hello, the internet. My name's Laura. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you my grow tent. That's right. I've had a, some requests recently because I keep mentioning my grow tent and it's been a while since I have done a video featuring my grow tent. And I have some work that I've kind of needed to do with my grow tent. So I figured this perfect opportunity to show you guys my grow tent. Show you guys like do a tour of all the plants that are in the grow tent. Um, and then that will kind of inspire me to do the, the work that I actually have to do in order to clean it up. So <laughs> I know, right? It's great. I, I, love, I love this kind of thing. Okay, so this is my grow tent. Um, it is kind of a, a, it's not a really expensive one. Um, it's basically just like a wire frame with some shelves and then it has a plastic cover that goes over it. I think I paid about 50 bucks for it probably. Um, but it does the job. Um, and I've been very grateful for it because it has helped out with a lot of my plants. Um, but anyway, so normally I have, well, I have... This grow light that just kind of sits up here, um, and I have this um, piece of shelf. I'm not sure how well you can see it with the light, but there's this piece of shelf here that doesn't slide on the plastic, and then the grow light kind of just sits sideways on there because I couldn't find a way to put it horizontally up there except to like throw it into my ceiling, and I just wasn't interested in that. And then. I have one grow light in there. You can kind of see it behind the pots. It's just actually sitting on the shelf. And then I have one grow light that's actually hanging um, for the these plants down here. So that's what I do with that. Um, and then it zips like so. And it has this little thing where you're supposed to like roll it up and then like tie it up in there. And I don't really ever do that. I just take this and I throw it up. And it just kind of sits sits up in there. Um, currently, it says it is 87% humidity in there. Um, most of the time, it's like 100% humidity in here, which is generally a little bit too high. And it's why I've been getting, you can see, I've got these little mold things growing all on the inside because it's just so humid in there all the time. And that's the thing that I really need to clean out because I don't really like the idea that there's mold growing on the inside of that, even though it is white mold and not black mold, but still. Um, but anyway, okay, so we'll just go, I guess, from the top. And I think I'll, I'm probably pull most of these out of here so that you can see them a little bit better. This, let's see, how is this gonna work? Now, I think I want like a little shelf to put these on. Okay, hold on. Okay, so first plant is my Calathea Makoyana. Um, I've had this in here for quite a while now. It was actually doing fine outside of my grow tent. Um, but then when I got the grow tent, I kind of wanted to put it in there and just see what would happen. And it's been growing pretty well in there. I mean, you know, it's a Calathea. It likes its um, it likes its humidity. And most of the the crispy edges that you've seen um, happened when I uh, accidentally underwatered it at one point. Um, but all the new the new leaves have been coming in and just being absolutely beautiful. Man, it looks really good on camera. <laughs> I love that. But anyway. Um, this is Calathea Macayana. I got a while ago. It's probably been about two years. Um, and it's been growing pretty well for me since then. So that is that plant. Okay, second plant that I have in here is my Philodendron Silver Sword. Um, this plant. I've had for as long as the Calathea Macayana, I've actually got those both from the same place. And this Philodendron Silver Sword has been growing great. I've actually cut the plant back multiple times. I've sold some of the cuttings. I've traded some of the cuttings. And then these are the two that I'm keeping for myself. I'm planning on putting like a a moss pole or some sort of a um, support in here and like letting them both grow up and just having a nice kind of, nice kind of plant um a nice full plant 
what I was trying to say, a full plant um, of, you know, the silver sword and then just up as high as I can get it to go. Um, and it's, it's doing really well in there. I have some trouble every once in a while with the leaves turning yellow. This is one of the older leaves. Like, this is one of the original leaves that came with the plant. And then, it is obviously, these are all newer leaves. And most of them look fine. But every once in a while, I get a yellow leaf on there, and I'm not exactly sure why. But it's been growing pretty easy, pretty healthy. It was actually also doing just fine outside of the grow tent. Um, and I just put it in there because I was like, well, more humidity is not going to hurt it. Um... And so, it's possible that at some point I'll bring it out of there, but for right now, it's in there, and it is happy. Um, this is my Begonia Deco Daddy. You would have seen this in my recent um, Begonia collection video. But this is one of the Begonias that I keep in the grow tent all the time. It was, it was just, it was suffering. Um, like, the leaves would come out, and then they would crisp up. And I just could never, I could never figure it out. Um, and then I put it in there and then the leaves really stopped crisping. Um, and it's been growing really nice in there. So I figure, figure that does a pretty good job. Um, and I don't really have much reason to bring it out because it's not all that big. One of the, one of the big problems with this is that, you know, the size is limited. So, you know, eventually there's just so many plants in there that, there just isn't room for anymore. So, but anyway, that is my Begonia Deco Daddy. All right. Um, this is my Begonia Red Kiss, which I just have pulled out now and I see that it's not doing so great. I thought it was doing really well in here and it is suddenly proving me wrong. Um, this other one seems to be doing fine. Um, but anyway, um, this begonia I had before, and I had a whole lot of trouble keeping it alive. And then I grew some propagations. I lost the original plant. I grew these propagations, and they've been growing really well as propagations. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll put them in the grow tent. And the, it'll do fine in there. And I thought it was doing fine, and now I'm losing leaves again. So, um, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to gonna have to try something it's possible that the soil is too wet because as you can see I've got um a lot of the sphagnum moss in there so I might be need to repot that into less sphagnum moss this one has looks like it has less sphagnum moss and is doing better so I don't know um these rex begonias are being very challenging and so we're just going to try something new um this is my begonia maculata whitey eye um, I was struggling with it for a really long time, um, and then I put it into the grow tent, and it's been doing a lot better. I still lose leaves occasionally, but it's at least putting on some really nice big growth here. Um, it just hasn't completely recovered, and it's possible that it needs to be watered, so I might actually have to take care of that, but that's, oh, Interesting. There is a death pod on here. Is there a death pod on here? There is. How did I never notice that before? Interesting. Okay. So it's possible that I am going to have to come and take these death pods off at some point. Huh. That would be really funny if that's the reason I've been having so much trouble with this. I wonder how I missed that. I've repotted this plant before. Isn't that funny? Anyway, everybody watch out for these death pods. They're little, um, they're little, like, I don't even know what to call them. They're little, um, things that they put around, pl they're plugs, that's what they're called. They're plugs that the, they put around the plants and they help them to move them when they're doing them in, like, a huge nursery, like, situation. They're supposed to take them off, but what happens is it constricts root, root growth. And it keeps the roots from being able to grow, which could be part of the reason why this plant has been doing so poorly. I had some on some other plants, and I pulled them off, but somehow I missed that these ones had death pods on them. And so that actually could be part of the problem. So I might have to do... I might have to do some surgery. Isn't that interesting? Ah, 
No matter how good of a plant person you get, you can still miss stuff. <laughs> anyway, this is my Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, and hopefully it will start doing better after I get those little pods out there. All right, on to my second shelf. This is a Philodendron Brantianum that I got in trade. Um, and I recently cut it um, to try and have the two different plants. Um, and it's been, it's been growing slowly, not quite as fast as I'd like. Um, but I really like it because of the silver on the leaves there. Um, and it's been doing pretty well in the grow tent, but I'm starting to think I might move it out of there and see how it does. Now that we've passed winter and my humidity is doing a little bit better, I'm thinking about actually taking it out of there and seeing what, seeing what it does out in the wide, wide world. And I could keep one in the grow tent and put one out and see which one does better. <laughs> it's always nice to have two plants for just that reason. Um, this is my Begonia Red Planet. Um, this plant was not really suffering, but I put it in the grow tent anyway. And it, it like exploded in there. Like it was kind of just growing slow. It wasn't really doing much. Um, and then I put it in there and it had, it, over the winter, it has gotten like double, if not triple the size. Um, and it has all these nice big leaves and everything is healthy. And, um, I almost don't want to take it out of there just because it's been doing so well. Um, but this is obviously a begonia rex that I was, like I said, I wasn't really having trouble with it. It wasn't doing badly. I'd lose a leaf every now and then, but I mean, even in there, you could see this leaf is kind of crisping up, um, on the edge there but for the most part it's growing in more leaves than I'm losing so it is doing well um, I also have a whole bunch of Macu Maculata Whitey Eye um, propagations in here I am not going to pull all of those out of there um, but they're just kind of chilling in there until I find people who want them and they're doing really well so Hoy this is my Hoya Crimson Princess um, I have gone through some things with this plant and eventually I just kind of put it into my grow tent. I, I rooted the rock, I rooted, rotted, I rotted the roots off of it at one point. I had to re-root it. I, you know, put it back in there, got mealy bugs, put it back in soil, got mealy bugs. And then, um, I eventually put it in my grow tent because I was like, boy, it's like humidity and it's actually been doing really well in there, but it took a really long time for it to get get to a decent place um and even now I just found a mealybug on it so it's possible I'm gonna have to spray it again stupid little mealybugs um but the plant itself is looking healthy so you know it's not like it's infested to the point of doing terribly um but that is my and then there's some leaves over here that have absolutely no variegation on them so I might end up having to get rid of those um but that's okay because I've got some nice ones that do have variegation on them, so. Well, this is my Black Fancy. I just pulled it out and saw this, um, which is kind of unfortunate. It looks like a whole bunch of the leaves just rotted and died. I don't know if this is because of the mold issue in there or what, but these guys are not doing well, and this plant was doing so beautifully. Um... This might be the result of there just being too much humidity. Oh, they're up here too. I have absolutely no idea. Um, but that's really a shame. I was hoping to show you guys how well my plants were doing. And this one is looking really, really terrible. So I'm going to have to do some doctoring to this one. It's going to be fine. I'm just going to have to cut it apart and reroute it. Um, because this whole middle section here has just all died and that, that really is a shame this plant was go growing so great I think it might just be because of, of the too much humidity in here and so we're just gonna have to deal with that as we will that's the other thing about this grow tent is I don't see these plants quite as much as easily because I have to like reach in here and pull them out so it was actually really good that I decided to do this video because it means that I'm getting in here to actually see these plants okay and this is my Calathea orbifolia, which just put out this new brand new leaf that is like absolutely huge and gorgeous. There is another leaf under there. Um, I kind of wish it had grown like that way. I don't know so that it would be like a full around, but I don't know. 
this guy has been doing super awesome in the grow tent and um he's got a little bit of um like weird looking stuff down around here like that almost looks like rot only i don't know the plant still seems to be doing great so I'm not super, oh, it's putting out another leaf already. Okay, so I'm only but so worried since it's putting out new leaves and it seems to be doing fine. Um, but this plant, that man, that leaf is just gorgeous. Look at that. So this guy is really enjoying the humidity in the tent. <laughs> All right, what do we got? My self-named begonia raspberry swirl. Um... This plant has just been up and down for me for so long that I don't even know whether I'm doing anything right with it anymore. Um, it's growing right now and it's put out a lot, lot of nice leaves and it's even got its beautiful raspberry color um, on some of the leaves and some of them are, have more silver on them, but don't seem to be any dead leaves at the moment. So I must be doing something right, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> This is my begonia, my $3 begonia. I call it my $3 begonia. I got it for $3. We've been through a lot, me and this little plant. Um, and he seems to be pretty much enjoying being in the grow tent. And so that's probably where he'll stay. Um, oh, he's got some little leaves coming in down there. Yeah. He was definitely not this color when I got him. I don't know what color he really is. You know, that leaf has got silver with like pink veining. These ones have a lot of green on them. I don't know. He's just my $3 begonia, and I love him, and I also hate him. <laughs> All right. My beautiful Alocasia Friedach, um, which has been suffering from some spider mites, and that's what, what you can see the, the damaged bits on these leaves. Um, but for the most part, it has been growing really well, super happy. Um, and I'm probably going to bring this out of my grow tent before too long. Um, I just wanted to keep, I kept a lot of my allocations in the grow tent over the winter because I didn't want them to go dormant or suffer from the lack of humidity. And um, for the most part, that was successful. Um, so that is my allocation Friday. It's doing really well. It's growing nice new leaves. Um, and then I just need to, I need to stay on top of the spider mite thing a little bit more. And I think I, once I get it out of there and I actually see it more often, I think I will be able to do that. So, um, okay. So this is my Calathea Zabrina. Um, I actually severely underwatered it at one point. I didn't notice that it needed to be watered and all the leaves like rolled up and curled up. And some of the lower ones like died completely off because they had been out of water for too long. Um, but most of the plant did jump back. It's growing a new leaf here. There's not a new leaf there yet, but I mean, like, it's still doing pretty well. This one also has problems with spider mites. Um, it is also sitting right next to the Alocasia Friday in the grow tent, so that's not really surprising. Um, but also, I'm going to try this one out of the grow tent. It has not lived very long out of the grow tent, like, since after, since I got it. Um, so we'll end up having to see how it does out of the grow tent, but I just love the way these leaves feel. They're just, they're like, not fuzzy, but they're soft, if that makes sense. I don't know. Um, and I just really, really love them. And they're really pretty. And for the most part, not in, not a hard Calathea to take care of. I don't know if that's because I have it in the grow tent or not. <laughs> Um, I'll have to give you guys an update if I end up taking it out of there. If it starts declining and I have to stick it back in there, I'll be like, no, it needs it needs all the needs all the humidity. But just beautiful leaves. An alocasia that I got. I do not know the species name. Um, I don't know the type of it. I call it black spade, but I'm sure that there's like actually a name for it, and I'm sure there's some other alocasia called black spade. Um, it has been doing okay in the grow tent. The bulb has grown a ton. Um, but, and this is the most recent leaf that I lost and it hasn't grown a new one yet, but I'm hope it seems to be doing fine. So I'm not really worried, um, about losing it. I might at some point plant it a little deeper, like, cause these little roots, 
like the bulb on an alocasia gets bigger like this, and then all the little roots are coming out. Oh, and I'm not even showing. Um, the, the bulb of the alocasia gets bigger like this, and then all these little air, they're like little roots that are ready to come out. Um, and then I, you can plant it. You don't ever want to plant it, obviously, you know, that the leaves are in there. But if you plant it up to where the roots are, then all these little guys can turn into roots. And then I'm, I assume that the plant gets bigger. I haven't, haven't had an alocasia do that well yet. Um, but I think I'm going to end up doing it with this one. The Friedac is not ready for that yet, but... I might give it a shot and it might help this plant out a little bit. All right. And last but not least, my um, Alocasia poly, which has done wonderfully and terribly all at the same time. I got this huge leaf, ended up giving it um, burn under my grow light. And so it kind of got yicky, but it's still a good leaf. And then over the winter, I got this leaf, which is far, far smaller, but the bulb itself got absolutely huge, <laughs> um, and then this one over here has been doing fairly well, too, so I'm, I'm thinking that I'm doing all right with it, um, again, it's been in the humidity tent, um, but I'm planning on bringing it out because this leaf actually grew when I had it out, like, last summer. Um, and so I don't think it needs the humidity tent. Again, I just put all my alocasias in there for over the, over the winter when I had like no humidity down here. Um, and now my humidity has started going back up in my house, which is wonderful. And I'm very happy. And a lot of my plants are, are very happy about that too. But I've always wanted one of these and I'm hoping that I can grow some more big leaves like this and then not burn them. <laughs> So that they're just gorgeous and beautiful. But that one is really nice looking. It's not quite as big. Um, but that one, that leaf is really, really gorgeous on there. Um, and then obviously, let's see if I can do this. The backs of these are just so pretty too. I love the backs of these, le these leaves. With the like burgundy purple and all the veining. They're just so nice. Um, so that is going to be... That's, that's all I've got in my grow tent. There's not a little ton in there. It looks like there's a ton, but a lot of them are those Maculata whitey eye cuttings that I really need to sell. <laughs> sell or trade. And now that it's, now that it's spring again, I, I should be able to do that because I can actually ship some out if people want them. Um, but anyway, I am not going to show you guys cleaning the mold off of this because I feel like that's not really going to be interesting, but you know, now that I'm, I'm here and whatever, I'm just going to go ahead and do it because I've like pulled a bunch of plants out of there and everything. So we're going to see how that goes. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to show you my beautiful orbifolia leaf because that is just oh, gorgeous. If you like this video, go ahead and like this video. Um, if you want to stick around and see some more plant tours, I'm probably going to do some plant tours of my other spaces in, in a short while, then go ahead and subscribe and stick around. Um, and thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today and also helping motivate me to clean the mold off of my, my poor little grow tent here. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.